Good evening, dear viewers of Factory.com by Vettri from Pondicherry. Last class, I have discussed under ionic equilibrium, theory of ionization. Under the theory, Arginase theory I have discussed. Then under the theory of acids and bases, I have discussed Arginase theory, Lowry and Bronson theory and Lewis theory I have discussed. Then, ionization of weak electrolyte, that is weak base and weak uh, acid also I have discussed. Then, Oswald's dilution law I have discussed. Then, pH and pOH of solution also I have discussed. Today, let me continue further. And to, I am going to discuss, that is, ionization of polybasic acids and polyacidic bases. Ionization of polybasic acids and polyacidic bases. First, let me take uh, polybasic acids. What is polybasic acids? The definition is polybasic acids are those having more than one ionization, that is ionizable proton. More than one ionizable proton per molecule of the acid. This is the definition. Let me repeat again. Polybasic acids are those having more than one ionizable proton per molecule of the acid. This is the interesting information. So, specific example, sulfuric acid, it is containing two ionizable hydro, uh, that is uh, protons, H2SO4. Phosphoric acid, another acid, containing three ionizable protons. And these two are mineral acids. Coming for the oxalic acid, this is the organic acid containing again two ionizable protons. So these are the examples of polybasic acid containing more than one proton, ionizable protons. Okay, now the ionization reaction for a dibasic acid, general acid, let me call it as H2X, let me generalize, a general acid H2X, that means the polybasic acid containing two ionizable protons are represented by the following equations. So how to write the ionization constant? for this particular general dibasic acid. The first example, so H2X aqueous medium undergoes ionizations to produce H plus and HX minus. So it is producing one proton and HX minus. So a reversible equilibrium. So for this particular reaction, I can write ionization constant Ka but here, since there is two protons, I am going to use Ka1. One indicates for the particular one plus two proton. So Ka1 equal to the concentration, the product of H plus into HX minus divided by H2X. This is the ionization constant for Ka1. That is Ka1. First ionization constant. Second one. Now the HX minus, that anion, again, producing one more ionizing under again giving one more proton producing x2 minus anion for this particular equilibrium reaction i can now equilibrium constant ka2 that is equal to h plus into x2 minus divided by hx minus this is the another ionization constant so for this particular dibasic acid h2x there are two ionization constant one is ka1 another is ka2 this is the interesting information Suppose if it any acid containing 3, that will be 3 ionizable constants. Okay, let me give some more information. Here, Ka1 and Ka2 are called first and the second ionization constant respectively of the general acid H2X. Can you follow? So, Ka1 and Ka2 are called first and second ionization constant respectively of general acid H2X. Okay. It is observed experimentally that higher order ionization constant, that is Ka2, is smaller than lower order ionization constant. Or other way, Ka1 will be always greater than Ka2. This is the interesting information. Ka1 will be always greater than Ka2. The reason is very, very simple. That means once the first once the first ionization constant is formed, that is the it is we are getting. So by, by producing one H plus, 
and from the anion again by removal of another H plus is very very difficult that's why KiO2 will be very low this is the interesting information so in this case it is, it is observed experimentally that the higher order ion cyclic constant KiO2 is always smaller than lower order constant or KiO1 will be always greater than KiO2 this is the interesting information experimental facts okay similarly for tripasic acid like phosphoric acid we have three ionization constant so automatically KiO1 will be greater than KiO2 KiO2 will be greater than KiO3 this is the interesting information regarding polybasic acids okay now the same way let me discuss in the case of polyacidic bases what is polyacidic bases polyacidic bases are those having more than one ionizable hydroxyl ions more than one ionizable hydroxyl ion per molecule of the base a specific example barium hydroxide BaOH twice it is, it is having two OH minus suppose it is a tri-basic that is we can tell a triacidic base we will get aluminum hydroxide specific example it is containing three OH groups this is another example tell you follow this is the interesting information okay for this particular the polyacidic bases now the ionization reaction for a diacidic base again a general i can represent general formula boh twice are represented by the following equation as in the case of polybasic acids okay let me show you now so what is happening BOH twice in aqueous media undergoes ionization to produce BOH plus and OH minus OH minus aqueous so for this particular reversible reaction the ionization constant KB1 is equal to the product of BOH plus into OH minus divided by BOH twice that is here the product of BOH plus into OH minus divided by BOH twice this is the KB1 the first ionization constant for the base the same way now what will happen now the BOH plus in aqueous again undergoing ionization producing one more OH minus in aqueous media so producing B2 plus aqueous this is the interesting information for this particular reversible reaction equilibrium reaction so KB2 equal to the constant of the product of B2 plus into OH minus divided by BOH plus so that is given. So B2 plus into OH minus divided by BOH plus. So this is KB2. This is the interesting information. So for this particular polyacidic basis, here two OH groups are present. There are two values, ionizable value, ionizable constant, KB1 and KB2. This is the interesting information. So as in the previous case, KB1 and KB2 are called the first and second ionization constant respectively of the base. BOH twice. Okay. Same way. Similarly, for triacidic base like aluminum hydroxide, we have three ionization constant. So KB1, KB2, KB3. Three ionization constant. So it is observed experimentally, higher order ionization constant is smaller than the lower order constant. Uh, lower order ionization constant, KB1. This is the interesting information. Tell you Okay. The next one. The next I want to discuss that is hydrolysis of salts and pH of the solution. So this is the another most important subunit you must understand. What is hydrolysis? What are the types of solids? And what way the pH value change depending upon the nature of salts undergoing hydrolysis? Let me discuss under this setting. First, what is a salt? The idea here it is, let me give an idea, that is salts, I can classify into three ways. One is, simple salt, another is double salt, and third is complex salt. So this is the way we have to classify. This is the most interesting information. So salts, I, any salts I can classify under any one of this category. It may be a simple, it may be a double, it may be a complex salt. 
So double salt nothing but more salt. Let's make example. Complex salt it is a potassium ferricyanate or potassium ferrocyanate specific example. So here I am going to concentrate only on simple salts. What are these uh, simple salts? Let me discuss here. So first let me discuss what is salts. Salts are formed by the reactions between acids and bases. Salts are formed by the reactions between acids and bases in definite proportions. In definite proportions. Okay. So what are the types I can classify? So I can classify the salts into four types. One is salt of strong acid, strong base. A specific example, sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is a salt of strong acid, strong base. So what is the salt? It is obtained from a strong base sodium hydroxide plus strong acid SCL. Kindly follow. So by reaction with the sodium hydroxide plus SCL, sodium chloride is formed. So this sodium chloride is a salt of strong acid, strong base. This is type 1. The same way. The second one is salt of strong acid, weak base. Strong acid, weak base. A specific example, ammonium chloride. So how ammonium chloride is formed? It is formed from a weak base ammonium hydroxide and a strong acid SCL. So ammonium hydroxide reacts with SCL to produce ammonium chloride which is a salt of strong acid SCL and weak base ammonium hydroxide. This is the second type, another interesting type. The third type, salt of weak acid and strong base. Specific example, sodium acetate. Weak acid and strong base. So this salt, that is sodium acetate, it is formed from a weak acid, acetic acid, organic acid, plus strong base sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide reacts with acetic acid and to produce sodium acetate, which is the salt of weak acid, strong base. This is the third type. And fourth type, salt of weak acid, weak base. Specific example, ammonium acetate. So this ammonium acetate is obtained from a weak acid, acetic acid, and weak base, ammonium hydroxide. So this is the way it is forming. So ammonium acetate is a salt of weak acid, weak base. It is obtained from weak acid, acetic acid, and the weak base, ammonium hydroxide. So these are the four salt types of salts that we have to discuss under this heading. So what are the salts? Now we'll undergo hydrolysis. If it is, where will all the salts will undergo or not? So that we are going to discuss. If it is undergoing, what will happen to the pH value? Let me discuss. So hydrolysis of salt. under this. So these salts undergo ionization in water. So when it is dissolved in water, it is undergo ionization. Right. So during ionization, the cations or anions form. When you are dissolved in water, so there may be cation, there may be anion. They are formed either exist at hydrated ions in aqueous solutions or interact with water to form, reform corresponding acids and bases depending upon the nature of salts. This is the very, very interesting information kindly follow. But the important information is, so these salts, I have discussed four types. These salts undergo ionization water and during ionization the cations or anions form either exist as hydrated ions. So the ion will be surrounded by water molecules in aqueous solutions or they will react with water to reform the corresponding acids or base. This will happen depending upon the nature of salts. So this is the most important information. Now, the interaction, this interaction between water and the cations or anions or both ions of this salt is called hydrolysis. This is the interesting definition for hydrolysis. So hydrolysis is nothing but the interaction between water and cation or anion or both. That is called hydrolysis. So this is the most important information. Okay, let me go for next. So, when it is undergoing hydrolysis, what happens? The pH of the solution gets affected by this interaction. 
The pH of the solution gets affected by this interaction. This is the most interesting information. Okay. So, another, it is interesting point to note that cations of strong bases, cations of strong bases, that is, the metals of alkali and alkali earth metal. So, cations formed from alkali and alkali earth metals and anions of strong, strong acid, that is SCR, HBR, nitric acid and chloric acid, that is perchloric acid, get hydrated but do not hydrolyze. hydrolyze. This is the most important. And therefore, the solution of the salts formed from strong acid and strong base are neutral. Most important information kindly follow. So, under the alkali metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium. And the alkali metals, beryllium, calcium, stanchium, barium, radium, etc. These metals, when they form cations, and they are in the form of salts, but, so these cations are anions of like Cl minus, Br minus, NO3 minus, and ClO4 minus get hydrated, but do not hydrolyze. They will not undergo hydrolysis, and therefore the solution of salt formed from strong, strong acid and strong base, all these neutral. Neutral. This is the most important information. Neutral means I have already discussed based on the pH value we can define. What is pH? pH is 7 means neutral. pH below 7 more acidic, above 7 it is more basic. This is the interesting information. Okay. Now, however, the other category of salts under hydrolysis. Can you follow? So, I have discussed four types of salt. That is salt of strong acid, strong base. And salt of strong acid, weak base. Then weak acid, strong base. And the salt of weak base, that is the weak acid. Among this, except the first category, that is salt of strong acid, strong base. Other category of salt, the remaining three will undergo hydrolysis. So the first salt will not undergo hydrolysis. This is the most important information. Okay. Now, thus, salts of strong acid, weak base, ammonium chloride. Salts of weak acid, strong base, sodium acetate. Salts of weak acid, weak base, ammonium acetate undergo hydrolysis. Undergo hydrolysis. This is the most important information. Okay. Now, let me take first one. Salt of strong acid weak base, specific example, ammonium chloride. So, that is salt of strong acid weak base. Now, in this case, here, ammonium ions that is formed from ammonium chloride, which is a strong electrolyte, ammonium chloride, undergo ionization to produce ammonium ion plus Cl minus ion. 100% undergo ionization because it's strong electrolyte. Ammonium chloride is a strong electrolyte. Undergo ionization to produce ammonium ion. In water, when we are dissolving water, ammonium ion will be immediately forming. Okay. So here, this ammonium ion undergo hydrolysis with water, reacts with water to form ammonium hydroxide. So what will happen now? So when it is undergoing this ammonium ion, it reacts with water to produce ammonium hydroxide. Interesting information. Plus H plus VPD. Kindly follow. The ammonium hydroxide is a weak electrolyte. The ionization will be very less. The interesting information is, so it is forming ammonium hydroxide and the big, a big base and the H plus ion in solution. So what is the resulting solution? So the resulting solution is acidic in nature. It is an acidic in nature and hence pH will be less than 7. Acid mean will be less than 7. So this is the most important and interesting information. Kind of all. So in the case of salt of strong acid weak base, specific example ammonium chloride. So ammonium chloride will undergo hydrolysis to produce ammonium hydroxide and H plus. So ammonium hydroxide is a weak base, ionization is very less. So, H plus will be more. So, it will be acidic in nature. So, resulting solution will be acidic. Resulting solution will be acidic mean pH will be less than 7. This is the interesting information. So, under this weak base, I can give an equation. This is called hydrolysis constant. KH is equal to KW by 
the corresponding lead i can write now kb so we see the most important equation kindly have it in mind ks hydrolysis is constant kw that is the corresponding ionic product kb ionization constant of this so if you know this kw kb k is can be calculated so normally problem can be asked so kindly note this equation this is for salt of strong acid weak base we can use right next one let me go for the next one next i will discuss salt of weak acid and strong base salt of weak acid and strong base i will discuss i will take now sodium acid so weak acid acetic acid strong base sodium hydroxide it is formed from acetic acid and sodium hydroxide suppose if you take sodium acetate and dissolved in water what will happen here so sodium acetate is a strong electrolyte we know so it will undergo hydrolysis to produce acetate ion and sodium plus this is the interesting information so this acetate ion when you dissolve in water that is automatically producing acetic acid a big big acid plus oh minus this is the interesting information so here the acetate ions formed here it is formed during anisation will undergo hydrolysis to give acetic acid weak acid and oh minus ions and so the solution is basic because oh minus ion is present in solution it is basic in nature if the solution is basic in nature the ph will be greater than 7 this is the interesting information so when number sodium acetate is dissolved in water the solution will be basic in nature it is the value will be greater than 7 ph value will be greater than 7 this is the most important information i want to so corresponding again as usual hydrolysis is constant here that is equal to kw by ka this is the equation here you have to use for salt of weak acids versus strong that is the strong base a specific example sodium acid as usual you know ka is hydrolysis constant kw ion product of water and ka the corresponding ion is constant of your weak acid this is the interesting information for this particular Salt of weak acid strong base. Okay, let me go. So the solution will be basic, pH will be greater than some. Okay, let me go for the next one. Third time. The salt of weak acid and weak base, a specific example, ammonium acetate. Ammonium acetate, actually, you know, it is formed from a weak acid, acetic acid, and that is a weak base ammonium hydroxide. Right. Here, both ions undergo hydrolysis. This is the most important information. Here, in this case, both acetate ion and ammonium ions will undergo hydrolysis to produce acetic acid and ammonium hydroxide, which are weak acid and weak base. Weak acid, weak base. So, if you take ammonium acetate, so in presence of water when it is all you will get now acetic acid plus the correspondingly ammonium hydroxide okay so that means both ion acetate ion and ammonium ion undergo hydrolysis so here the degree of hydrolysis independent of concentration of solution and the ph of such a solution is determined by pKa values that is pH may be 7 or less than 7 depending upon the nature of salt we are using. So, for as usual, the specific the equation again, KH here that is equal to KW by KA into KB. This is the most interesting information for the, this particular reaction, this, this particular salt. So, for this KH, hydrolysis is constant, KW ionic product of water, KA ionic acid comes from the acid, KB, weak base. So this is the equation you have to apply to calculate the problems. So kindly, so this is the interesting information you must know. Okay, with this, let me go for the next topic. That is buffer solutions. What is a buffer solution? Let me discuss now. I can define buffer solution. Your buffer solution is one 
whose pH value remains constant even after the addition of a small amount of strong acid or strong base. This is the example. Let me repeat again. A buffer solution is one whose pH value remains constant even after the addition of a small amount of strong acid or strong base. I have already indicated pH can be measured by a meter called a pH meter. So now, so this pH value can be measured experimentally. Right. So when you are having this any solution, buffer solution, and then again pH you can determine the pH value. Then and externally a small quantity of strong acid, so pH will not change. Same way, add a small quantity of strong base, again pH will not say. So that solution will call it as a buffer solution. So, a buffer solution is one whose pH value remains constant even after the addition of a small amount of strong acid or strong base. That is called buffer solutions. So, this buffer solution I can classify into three types. Can you follow? All the buffer solution I can broadly classify into three types. Type 1, acidic buffer. Type 2, basic buffer. And type 3, amphoteric buffer. So, let me come back now. What will be acidic buffer? Acidic buffer means the buffer containing a weak acid and its salt with a strong base. Can you follow? A weak acid and its salt with a strong base. In this case, specific example, I have taken acetic acid and, and its salt is sodium acetate. Sodium is a strong base, sodium acetate. So this is acidic buffer. I can give a number of examples. So I can give another example is carbonic acid. It is a weak base, the corresponding for sodium bicarbonate, I can. So that way, they can be an example. So, this is the acidic buffer. Okay, coming for the basic buffer. Basic means a weak base and it's salt with a strong acid. A weak base and it's salt with a strong, base, a strong acid. Weak base here, ammonium hydroxide, and the salt is ammonium chloride with the salt of weak base strong acid as here. So any weak base and its salt with strong acid is called basic buffer. This is another second type. And third type, amphoteric buffer. Specific example, proteins, polypeptides, peptide and amino acids. This is a specific example of amphoteric buffer. Amphoteric means behaving as acidic as well as basic buffer. So amino acids undergo combination to produce peptides. Peptides will undergo combination to produce polypeptides. Polypeptides will undergo the combination to produce proteins. So protein is present in our body. So these proteins and amino acids will behave as amphoteric buffer. Okay, let me go in detail the action. Let me take first the acidic buffer and its action. Let me explain. So I have already pointed out acidic buffer means a mixture of acetic acid and sodium acid. And you follow. So when you take a buffer means, it's a, it's a mixture of acetic acid and sodium acetate. So acetic acid is a weak electrolyte venom we have already discussed. So it undergoes ionization, acetate ion and H plus, there's an equilibrium between these two ions and unionized molecule because it's a weak electrolyte. Whereas in the case of sodium acetate, it's a strong electrolyte undergoing 100% ionization producing acetate ion and sodium plus. So in the solution, what is happening? The excess of acetic acid is there, the excess of acetate ion is there, and excess of sodium plus and small quantity of H plus is there. This is the acidic buffer solution contained. Okay, so in this solution, so now suppose when we add HCl, what will happen? Let me explain. Suppose I am adding a few drops of HCl. When M, we know HCl is a strong electrolyte, mineral acid is a strong electrolyte. Immediately undergo ionization to produce H plus and Cl minus. So what will happen now? This H plus coming from the SCL on ionization combines with the acetate ion present in the buffer solution to produce acetic acid which is a weak electrolyte. So adding the effect of H plus is nullified. So pH is not changed. So pH depends upon H plus ion concentration, but here when we are adding HCl, iron ion concentration will increase. But that H plus will be neutralized by acetate ion, which is present in the buffer solution. So pH is not changing. This is the very interesting action of the acidic buffer. 
They say they. Now you take and a few drops of a few amount of sodium hydroxide. For sodium hydroxide actually again it's a strong electrolyte. Immediately undergo ionization to produce sodium plus and OH minus. So this OH minus ion again it's combining with acetic acid, unionized acetic acid in the buffer solution to produce acetate ions and water. Water is a weak electrolyte, will not ionize further, only very little amount. So acetate already acetate ion already present. So excess of acetate ion, nothing will happen. So the adding effect of OH minus getting nullified. So again, pH is not changing. Very, very interesting information. In the case of acidic buffer solutions, either by adding SCL or by adding sodium hydroxide, pH is not changing. That's why this is called buffer solution, basically acidic buffer solution, a mixture of acetic acid and sodium acetate. The same way, let me explain the action of basic buffer solution. So under the basic buffer solution, I have already pointed out, is a mixture of ammonium hydroxide and ammonium chloride. A yeah, weak base and it's sort of strong acid. Ammonium hydroxide and ammonium chloride. In this basic buffer solution, ammonium hydroxide is a weak electrolyte, undergoes ionization to produce ammonium ion and OH minus. It's an equilibrium substance because unionized ammonium hydroxide is an equilibrium in ion a small amount of ionized NH4 plus OH minus. Whereas Ammonium chloride is a strong electrolyte undergoing ionization 100%. So, ammonium ions and Cl minus ions are formed. So, in the resulting basic buffer solution, excess of ammonium hydroxide is present, excess of ammonium ion is present, excess of Cl minus is present, and a small quantity of OH minus is present. Kind of one. Right. So, suppose if I am adding a few ml of SCl, a strong electrolyte, undergo ionization to produce H plus ion and this H plus ion immediately combines with unionized ammonium hydroxide present in the basic buffer solution to form ammonium ion and water. So water is a weak electrolyte, it will not ionize further. So ammonium ion will not, it's again excess, it's already present in the solution, nothing will happen. So the adding H plus, the effect of adding H plus is nullified. It's nullified by converting into water and ammonium ion, so pH is not changing. So by the addition of SCL, pH value is not changing, so it's a buffer solution. The same way, when I add sodium hydroxide, which is a strong electrolyte, the strong electrolyte under ionization to produce sodium plus and OH minus. So OH minus combines with ammonium ion, which is excess present in the buffer solution to produce ammonium hydroxide which is a weak electrolyte. So the adding OH minus is removed by ammonium ion to form ammonium hydroxide which is, an, which is a weak electrolyte not undergoing ionization. So automatically the adding effect is nullified so pH is not changing. So, this is the very very interesting information. That is either by addition of SCO or by addition of sodium hydroxide pH value is not changing in the case of basic buffer solution also. This is the interesting information. The same day here. Let me go for the next. Let me explain. Amphoteric buffer solution. This is the most important information. Amphoteric buffer solution. I have already pointed out amino acid, peptides, polypeptides, and proteins are specific examples. So in this case, I will take a specific amino acid, glycine. The first member of amino acid which is optically inactive. Except glycine, this is normally a question can be asked even in Gipper and other question papers. Except the glycine, all the amino acids are optically active. The only amino acid which is not optically active, not optically active is glycine. It is called amino acetic acid. Okay. So you take glycine. So it will always exist in the form of dipolar ion or sweeter ion. What do you mean by dipole? It will be one part will be positive, other part will be negative. So actually, what is happening? Hydrogen ion, hydrogen H plus of car carboxylic acid group is moving to the converting into NH2 group to NH3 plus. So automatically COO minus is formed. One end positive, ammonium plus, another end minus, COO minus. That's why it is called the dipolar ion or sweeter ion, a specific name. Okay, so all proteins and amino acids will behave like this. That's called dipolar ion or sweeter ion. Okay, with this. So let me come forward. Suppose if I am adding by a few drops of SCL, which is strong electrolyte, I have already discussed, 
providing H plus and Cl minus on ionization. So this H plus, now what will happen now? It is now combining with the dipolar ion with COO minus, converting into the corresponding NH3 plus and CH2COOH, converting into corresponding acid. So now the suture ion becoming a positive ion. NH3 plus CH2COOH. So the adding H plus is getting neutralized by converting into the corresponding acid. So this is a weak acid, so it's not getting ionized. So adding H plus is getting nullified. So pH will not change. So in this amphotric buffer solution, by addition of HCl, the pH value will not change. The same way, suppose if I add a few drops of sodium hydroxide, a strong electrolyte, on undergo ionization to produce sodium plus and OH minus, and this OH minus combines with again the suture ion NH3 plus CH2COO minus. So this OH minus will combine with the H plus, H plus of the NH3 plus. So forming water and giving this a negative ion that NH2CH2COO minus ion will form. A negative ion will form and water is formed. Water is a weak electrolyte. So adding OH minus is converted into water by taking one proton from the NH3 plus. Can, can, can utilizing that and into NH2. So it will become negative ion. The interesting information is in acid medium, now the, 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 the dipolar ion becomes a positive ion. In basic medium, it is beginning as a negative ion. This is a very, very interesting information. By addition of HCl or sodium hydroxide, a few drops, the pH will not sink. So this is called amphotric buffer solution specific example. Here, I want to give one more information. That is, normally, if you take these amino acids in a cell, I have already pointed out, cell means the... Uh, a cell consists of two electrodes, one is positive electrode and negative electrode. And if you take this amino acid in a particular cell, and if you pass electric current, so what will happen now, depending upon the nature of acid medium or basic medium, so this, if it is acid medium, positive ion, so positive ion move towards the negative electrode. In the basic media, it, it, it is behaving as a negative ion, negative ion will move to the positive electrode. So, so this particular, in the case, I have to introduce a new term called isoelectric point. This is normally most important, isoelectric point. What is isoelectric point? Isoelectric point is defined as a pH value. Isoelectric point is defined as a pH value at which, so the ion, the amino acid molecule will neither migrate to positive electrode nor migrate to negative electrode. So whatever pH value this is taking place, that pH value is called isoelectric point. Can you follow? Let me repeat again. Because I have already pointed out, amino acid will behave as a dipolar ion, sweater ion. In acid medium, we have discussed already, it is behaving as a positive. In basic medium, it is behaving as a negative. So positive ion will move towards negative electron, negative ion will move towards the positive electron normally. But we have to adjust the pH value in such a way that at a particular pH value, the amino acid molecule will not migrate. So we have to find out what pH this is doing taking place. That pH value is called isoelectric point. Let me repeat again. Isoelectric point is defined as a pH value at which amino acid molecule neither migrate to positive electron nor migrate to negative electrode. This is the most important information under this amphotric buffer solution. Okay, let me go for the next. So, I have discussed so far, the interesting information is, so buffer solution of three types, acidic buffer, basic buffer and amphotric buffer. At the specific example I have discussed. Now let me come far. I am going to derive a mathematical equation given by hindrance and equation. It's called the Hendrenson. The scientist Hendrenson derived an equation connecting the ionization constant pH value and PKAP and PKB values. So let me now, I will derive now the Hendrenson equation for acidic buffer as well as basic buffer. Kindly follow me. Suppose for that specifically, let me take a general acid, weak acid, HA. A general acid, HA. It's not, I'm not taking specific, a general acid, a mono basic acid that is HA. 
So, with a weak electrolyte undergo ionization to produce H2 plus and E minus is having it is in equilibrium. And then as to by acid molecules in equilibrium with ionized H2 plus and E minus. Okay. This is the equation one. Now, for this, according to law of mass action, I know that is KA ionization and we have already derived that nothing but the product of H plus and E minus divided by HA that is nothing but KA ionization constant of weak acid. So, Ka equal to H plus into A minus divided by HA. What is Ka? I have already found out. It is ionization constant. Okay. Let me rearrange this. The next step is, I am from that equation, I am rearranging. What is H plus from that I am rearranging? H plus is equal to the correspondingly Ka into HA by A minus. So, from equation 2, I am getting this H plus value. Is that is equal to Ka into HA by a minus. What is HA? Nothing but acid. What is A minus? Nothing but salt. So by substituting this value, I am getting the equation 4. That is H plus is equal to Ka into acid by salt. This is the interesting information. Next step. For the next step, now what I am doing is take logarithm on both sides. Take logarithm on both sides. So log H plus is equal to log Ka plus log acid by salt. This is the equation 5. Kind of all. So I am taking logarithm on both sides. The left side H plus, right side Ka acid by salt. So when I am taking log, uh, that is logarithm value, so log H plus is equal to log Ka plus log acid by salt. Okay, let me go with the next step. So from this, next step, so I have taken plus. So what I am doing now, next step is, I am multiplying the entire equation by minus sign. So log H plus multiplied by minus, log K multiplied by minus again, plus log again multiplied by minus. So all the cases I am multiplying by minus. So that equation 4 becomes 5 as log H plus is equal to minus log K A minus log as a base solve. This is the equation 5. Okay. The answer interesting information, just for our convenience, I am changing now. So equation, what is this? I am retaining log H plus as such, minus log H plus. I am retaining minus log Ka, but only here I am exchanging the conservation terms. So that is, I am reversing the salt by acid, so that this minus sign becomes plus. So it is now becoming plus log salt by acid, that takes six, equation 6. Can you see, the equation 5 which is changing into equation 3, only difference here, instead of minus, I am putting plus, so that the concentration of acid and salt will be getting reversed. This is the interesting information. Okay. For the next part, now, the most important part I am coming now. We know from the definition of pH value, what is pH? pH is defined as the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration. So this value, nothing but pH. I am substituting. The same way. What is pKa? pKa again nothing but negative logarithm of Ka value. Again I am substituting pKa. So rewriting log salt by So this is the very very famous Hendrickson and equation for acidic buffer. Kind of follow. So a lot of problem will be asked in IIT and other games and other different person buffers. So what we need? They will give pH value. They will give the concentration of salt and acid, they can ask pKa. Or, they, can, they will give pKa value, they will give some concentration of salt and acid, they will ask pH value. Or, they will give pH and pKa value, they will ask the concentration of salt and acid ratio, they will ask. So, out of three factors, two factors will be given, third factor will be asked in terms of problem. Kindly follow. This is the most interesting information for the First one, that is, this is the equation, Hendon's equation for acidic buffer. Okay, next one. Same way, I am going to derive Hendon's equation for basic buffer. This is the interesting information. As usual, a base, big base, a general formula of BOH, a monoacidic base. So, it's a weak light undergoing ionization B plus and OH minus. It's an irreversible arrow indicates an equilibrium between unionized and ionized ions. Okay. So for this base, as usual, what is Kb is equal to the product of B plus into OH minus 
divided by P y h, that is the equation number 9. So, ionization concept of the weak base is equal to B plus into y h minus divided by P y h. Right. What is K B? We know ionization concept for your weak base. Okay. Next. So, from that equation 9, I am rearranging. What is y h minus? I am rearranging nothing but k b into b y h by b, b plus. What is b y h? Nothing but a base. What is b plus? Nothing but a sum. I am rewriting the equation term as y h minus is equal to k b into base by sol. That is the equation level. Base by sol. Okay. So, now what I have to do now? So, first I have to do multiply the entire equation by first log and then by minus. So, I can write in a single step here. So, minus log. So, I am taking now minus log y h minus. Same way here. Minus log k b and minus log base by sum. Because the previous one I have informed you two steps. First I am taking logarithm. Then I was multiplied, I was multiplying by negative. So here I am showing a single step because I assume that you know the step. So simply directly I am writing. So minus log OH minus is equal to minus log KB minus log base by sol. This is the equation 12. So from this, I am rewriting now. Can you follow? So I am getting this. This is the sol now. I am that's again rewriting minus log OH minus as such. Minus log KB asset, but only thing I am now putting a plus, so changing, reversing the salt and base. So salt by base I am bringing. This is the equation 30. The previous equation minus base by salt it was. So now in this case I am putting plus, so that I am reversing the concentration of salt and base. Okay. So this is the equation. Now I know from the definition what is PYH. PYH is nothing but the negative logarithm of YH minus I. So I am substituting here. The same way, P K B nothing but minus log K B. Minus log K B is that, that is the P K B. So that as said, I can now write this equation. Kindly follow. This is the Henderson equation for a, a correspondingly basic form. So the equation seven I have already indicated, and here fourteen are called Henderson equation. So, when we suppose students who are listening this lecture, in both point of view, if they ask questions, they derive Henderson equations. So, you have to derive and show, 7 and 14 you have to show. That is the most important. But as I have already pointed out, the problem will be asked based on this equation. PYX equal to PKB plus log salt by base. This is the interesting information I have discussed. So, I have derived. The Henderson equation both for the acidic buffer as well as basic buffer. Okay, let me go over the next. What are the characters, important applications of Henderson equation? Characteristic. So I am getting three important, most important application. Number one, pH and pYH of a buffer solution can be calculated. Just now I have informed you. Okay, from the equation left side pH or pYH, right side pKA or P, um, that is pKB. So plus log concentration of salt by acid or salt by base. So from that, so what we can do, if you know the other two terms on the right hand side, pH and pOH can be calculated. This is very, very interesting. With the help of Henderson equation, we can be able to calculate pH and pOH. Number one. Number two, the dissociation constant of a weak acid Ka and our weak base Kb can be determined by measuring pH of a buffer solution containing pq molar concentration of acid or base. In the sun. This is the very very interesting information. So the dissociation constant of Ka and Kb also can be determined by keeping the condition by measuring pH of buffer solution containing EQ molar concentration of acid or base of the sun. So let, just listen here, we can understand. So in this equation, so if you are keeping salt concentration and base concentration nothing but same automatically log 1 so that means pyh will be pkb the same way ph may be pka so directly you can measure P ph and poh we can measure directly by keeping this concentration of salt and base equimolar concentration this is the idea so directly we can measure from pka from pkb we can measure ka and kb that is the second most important 
applications. Okay, third one, the most important information. Your buffer solution of desired pH, whatever pH you want, can be preferred by adjusting the concentration of the salt and the acid or base added from the buffer. Kindly follow. This is another interesting information because some cases when we are conducting reactions, when we are doing some process, we have to maintain a pH value. So how we have to maintain a pH value? So your buffer solution of desired pH can be prepared. We can prepare what way? By adjusting the concentration of salt and acid or base added for the buffer. So these are the most important applications of buffer solution. Okay, let me go for the next one. So here I have indicated some specific examples so the pH range. So whatever pH range you want, by mixing these two, the, we can prepare the corresponding buffer solution. This is the uh, important for you are running after joining for MBBS or engineering. Suppose this is the information you need. So if you want to make, prepare a, any particular pH of any solution, so these are the salt you have to mix. So first one, suppose you want to keep pH value between 2.2 to 3.8, you have to take thalic acid and the corresponding potassium acid thalate salt you have to take salt and acid concentration and you have to adjust such a way that the pH will be between 2.2 to 3.8 this is a very very interesting information okay suppose if you want to keep your pH value between 3.7 to 5.6 this is another interesting information so you mix now your acetic acid and sodium acetate solution a mixture of acetic acid, weak acid, and uh, sodium acetate, a salt of weak acid, strong base. So if you mix, adjust the concentrations, so you can adjust the pH value between 3.7 to 5.6. This is a very, very interesting information. Another one. Suppose, if you want to keep pH value between 5.8 to 8 pH value, now you use sodium dihydrogen phosphate and disodium hydrogen phosphate. This mixture you have to adjust the concentration. This if you adjust this concentration, the pH will be between 5.8 to 8. This is the other interesting information. Okay, the next one, last one is boric acid and borax by mixing, you can pre prepare a pH solution of 6.8 to 9.2. This is the very, very interesting information I want to convey to you. Tell you because this is the most important. Normally, you can keep it and note, note, note down kindly. Just I will give one, just one minute time, kindly note in this value. Because this is a very, very interesting in future, it may be useful to you. So, if you want to keep a pH value of solution between 2.2 to 3.8, mix, adjust the concentration of thalic acid and potassium acid thalate. If you want to keep pH value buffer solution of 3.7 to 5.6, adjust the concentration of acetic acid and sodium acetate. If you want to keep the concentration, the pH value of between 5.8 to 8, you can adjust the concentration of sodium dihydrogen phosphate and disodium hydrogen phosphate. Similarly, if you want to keep pH value between 6.8 to 9.2, adjust the concentration of boric acid and borax. So this is the most important information I want to give under this. Okay, let me go for the next one. Finally, I am coming for application. So what are the what, what is the advantage applications we are by using buffer solutions? The we are applying we are using buffer solution for a refining of sugar. So this is the industrial point of view, industrial applications. But to refine sugar, we are using the buffer solutions. I am not going in detail. Just I am mentioning that uh, that song. Right. And second important application. Water purification. Purification of water can be done with the help of again buffer solution. By using suitable buffer solution, we can purify water. The next one. Turning of leather. Again, another interesting applications we can use for the again by using a buffer solution we are doing. Again, industrial applications. And the most important manufacture of paper, again we are doing with the help of buffer solution. So this is the most important application. Lastly, 
the manufacture of milk products even in milk product formation of the, the manufacture of milk products also we are using buffer solution so this is the most important application so refining of sugar purification of water turning of leather manufacture of paper and manufacture of milk products the buffer solutions are commonly used to that is the most important information i want to give okay i hope you have enjoyed the lecture i will meet you in the next class thank you